In this video, I'm going to show you a practical and achievable way that you can get your first 1 million streams in 2024. And I'm not just pulling this number out of nowhere, I'm basing it off of real data. Back in 2022, I have this band every waking moment that I launched in February. In the first 10 months, we were able to get about a quarter million streams on Spotify alone, adding up Apple Music and YouTube that ended up being more about 300K. But now I have an additional year of data to show you how things went. So this is the first year of data going from when we started in 2022 up to February 15, 2023, about 314,000 streams. And then the next year where we released almost nothing, we released one song and did very little marketing in comparison, we get another 300K just from the passive listeners that we accrued from the year before. But also even in this first year in 2022, when we were doing all this, we weren't doing everything we could have been. So this is why I'm confident that like, you know, this represents a year, a little over, roughly a third of a million streams. And we weren't doing everything we could. So I'm confident that with everything I'm gonna show you in this video, you can do better than what we did. And also I'm talking about a million once you add up all this other stuff too. Like you have Apple Music, and of course you also have Deezer and Tidal and Napster and Yandex and whatever. But then also on YouTube Analytics, we also got over that same time period, um, and this could, again, just this is about two years, 138,000. So I'm confident you can do better than me with everything I show you in this video. So these are the things we're gonna be covering in this video, but I wanna mention something important that should be obvious, but it isn't always. You need to have awesome music. If your music isn't awesome, you probably shouldn't be marketing it yet. And yes, you can get a decent, okay, but not the best song and make it perform well. And it is true that a mediocre song with great marketing with a amazing song with awful marketing, often the mediocre song will win and it sucks, but you know, you have, you should have great music. If, if you have great music, it'll make everything way easier. If you have mediocre music, yes, you can get results, but people aren't going to stick around for the long term in most cases. So make sure your music's ready for prime time. If you're looking for a rule of thumb, I usually say your music should be at least 80% as good as what's commercially viable in your genre. And I'm going to link to you another video right here. You can check out to learn more about what, what this means and if your music's Ready. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is your release plan. When I say release plan, I really just mean think about how often and when you're going to be releasing music throughout the year. You don't have to have your whole next year of music completely planned out with the exact dates or even the exact spacing because it's going to evolve. But I would recommend picking a relatively consistent schedule you're going to follow throughout the year in terms of how many weeks between each release and also generally how many songs you're going to be having throughout the year, if you're going to drop an album at some point, etc. And I did make a more detailed video about this on albums versus singles that I do recommend you check out right here. But uh, in general, my recommendation is going to be release a new song every four to eight weeks. And eventually, when you hit, let's say, eight songs that are, would be fit for an album, then release the entire album, eight to ten singles, and then release an album. Uh, basically, if you have a 12 song album, I recommend releasing eight to ten of those songs as singles before you drop the album. But ignoring the album part, every four to eight weeks, ideally maybe four to six, but if eight weeks works better for you, great. And, and one thing I want you to consider with this is don't stick to something you can't do for at least like six months. So don't say I'm going to release every two weeks and then do it for a couple months and then just quit and then you don't release music for a year. I've seen so many people do that. Also, don't plan on I'm only going to release a new song every six months. That's not a good idea either. I would rather have you wait to start all this releases, all these releases until you have a batch ready so that you can release a little bit more frequently and take advantage of the, the growth you're getting. Because you don't want to just grow and then kind of die off and then release a new one and kind of start from zero every time. You want to kind of get some momentum release after release. So in general, release a new song every four to eight weeks, which is going to tie in very nicely with your social media schedule. And you can align those as tightly as you can. But now let's dive in. The first thing I'm gonna be talking about is free music marketing methods. And in particular, the strategy I'm gonna give you here revolves around social media. Now, you're probably thinking, I hate social media. I really don't wanna do social media, but, but bear with me for a second. Social media is kind of the modern day stage, if you will. Like in the past, people would actually have to play shows and tour a lot more and get out. They, they had no online means of, of reproducing and promoting their music. They just couldn't afford radio promotion. They couldn't afford banner ads or billboards or or anything. So they would have to drive from city to city just to get anyone to hear their music and then for word of mouth to spread. And yes, you can do that today, but you don't have to do that today. You can basically just perform on social media. So first thing, instead of thinking about social media as I have to make content, I have to make stupid videos and follow trends, think of it as that you, you're just performing on the internet. Would you do a live stream concert? Would you do a regular concert? If you do a regular concert, you should do a live stream concert. And if you can do a live stream concert, you can create content of basically a, a video of you performing and spread it on the internet as much as possible. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this and there's no one size fits all when it comes to content. But I wanna give you what I think is possibly the easiest 
type of content you can make at scale that seems to work reasonably well. So over here, as I'm talking, I'm gonna play some videos so you can kind of know what I'm talking about. But basically what we're gonna do is find three or four different cool locations that you can go and basically just lip sync or perform your song at. Whether it's a real recording, that's amazing. It doesn't have to be a real recording, it can just be a lip sync. But find three to four cool locations, whether it's an abandoned building, a beach, a mountaintop, your home studio, whatever it is, list those spots. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to those spots, either with yourself in a tripod or you and a friend, and you're just gonna film yourself lip syncing or actually performing your song at these cool locations, the whole song. It might take you a couple takes, that's fine. But if let's say you're doing the lip sync version, it might take you two or three takes to get it right. So let's say that's 15 minutes per, per location. Maybe we double it just because your first time, half an hour per location. Well, if you have four locations, that's two hours that you filmed all this content. Now, the next thing you have to do is you're gonna get all these videos, you're gonna cut them up into chunks. You're probably gonna make a chunk of the chorus for every single location, but I would also make chunks for different parts. So the intro, verse, bridge, last chorus versus the first chorus, et cetera. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is come up with, let's say 10 to 20 hooks. When I say hook, I don't mean like a melodic hook. I mean a hook that ties your song to something that people can relate to. Is this a breakup song? Is this an empowerment song? Is this a motivational song? Is this a workout song? Whatever it is, whatever kind of you think people could resonate their song or your song to their lives, you should think about what hooks that could be. So this might be, this is the best song for people who just got out of a bad relationship. This is the best song for you going to the gym, or this is the best song to make 2024 your best year ever. Those aren't the best examples, but those that kind of vein, think about 10 to 20 of them. The reason why 10 to 20, is I just want you to make a list of all the different ideas and ways you can tie your song to other people's lives. Don't make it about you, make it about how a stranger could hear your song and think about this is a song that I relate to. And now you have all these clips that you just made from all these different cool locations that you perform or lip sync your song at, and you have all these different hooks. And if you multiply all those numbers out, you end up with a ridiculous amount of videos that you can post on social media. And when it comes to posting schedules, it really depends on how much you just made. Let's say you just made 30 pieces of social media content. Well, you might be able to get around posting every single day. You might be able to post more than once a day. Or you might be able to post, let's say, three to five times a week. What I recommend above all is think about how much you can handle doing for at least six to 12 months. I would rather have you post three times a week for six months or 12 months than post every single day of the week, but give up in three months or end up drastically changing how much you're posting in three months. So think about what you can handle and stick to for a long duration because social media just takes a while for things to stick. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is attend my free music marketing summit. There's over 10 hours of content with over 15 guests with music marketing, music business, music industry content for you to consume entirely for free. There's a link in the description where you can find out more information. It's running January 16th to January 18th, 2024. If you're watching this after the fact, you can still click the link below so you can join a waiting list to learn when we're running another one in the future. But yeah, it's gonna be a great time. There's some pre-recorded elements. There's some gonna be some live streams as well. And there's a VIP package if you wanna have uh, replay access to the whole event as well. So I wanna talk about YouTube real quick, because YouTube is kind of like social media, but people treat it very differently. And, and there's a few good reasons for that. Generally, it's longer form content, and usually your music videos will go on YouTube. But in addition to music videos, you can make lyric videos. And also, I don't know if you know this, but I have a, an affordable lyric video service. You can find a link for that in the description. Uh, where we can make lyric videos for you. We have a team that can build them for you. So uh, consider that if you're interested. But you can also make visualizers. You can also just upload your music with the artwork and you can make performance videos, and you can do acoustic versions, and you could do, I ran out of ideas, <laughs> but those are a lot of videos, right? You don't have to do all of them for every song, but maybe let's say you you get one of those social media videos that you did where you lip sync the entire song. That might be able to be a music video, right? Like that can be a music video as long as you filmed it in like a you know reasonably good manner uh, and you filmed it with the right aspect ratio, but that could be a music video. Now, it could also be a performance video if you filmed it live. And it could also be very easy for you to maybe film two different versions of that while you're on set filming the social media content. And then now those two versions combined are the music video. That way you have two different angles you can cut between. Or maybe you have a different music video. But either way, I would pick a handful of these for every song, if you can, to release at different points throughout the release of your, your, your release. Wow, I said release a lot there. But let's say you have a song come out and you're going to have a new song come out every six weeks. On release day, maybe the music video goes live and then two weeks later maybe the lyric video goes live and then maybe two weeks later the visualizer goes live. It doesn't have to be that exact order. It doesn't really matter per se. It's up to you. You don't have to do three. Maybe you just do two, but I would recommend doing more than one 
if you can, just because that's going to be more content that you have available not just for YouTube, but you can also make these videos into social media posts. And also when it comes to our next section, these, these videos that we're talking about for social media and for YouTube are gonna become important again. So this isn't a list of everything you can possibly do to promote your music for free. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about stuff at the end of this video, but I'm going to be making a new video on how to get your first 1000 monthly listeners on Spotify for free with no paid marketing methods. Now we're gonna be transitioning into paid marketing methods, but subscribe and ring that bell if you wanna see that video if you're not already. Now, when it comes to paid methods, there's a million things you can do, but there's also a million things that you can waste your money on when you're new, because there's a lot of really great ways to promote your music if you have some money to do it, but they're not all necessarily suited for people who are just starting off. For example, I wouldn't recommend most people starting off do any kind of PR, because it's, it's really, a, usually it's a very high amount of money, and it's not going to make an impact in the bottom line. Like, I have some people spend three grand in PR and have it made pretty much zero impact on social media or Spotify or Apple or their email list. And so, you know, there's a lot of things like that. And also I wouldn't recommend if you're starting from scratch that you immediately dive into doing playlist promotion. There's times when it makes sense, but if you're just starting off and you don't have a big catalog and you don't have algorithmic stuff happening and you don't have all this stuff, other stuff going on, it doesn't make sense in, in a lot of cases. So what do I recommend? Well, if you know me at all, you probably know I'm a big fan of running Facebook ads or meta ads. And in most cases, these ads are going to be running on Instagram. And one reason why I really like meta ads is you can start with whatever budget you feel comfortable with. You can get into testing it with something as small as 50 or hundred bucks to kind of see what kind of results you get. Now I recommend having a bigger budget than that, something like $300 and up, like if it's 300 or 500 or thousand dollars per song, that's a lot better, but you can get started with a lot less. And obviously this is gonna be relative to you and where you're from, like in some countries, $300, or not just countries, but in some, for some people, $300 is a ton of money. Like if you have a lot of, of overhead expenses and you don't have much money coming in, $300 can mean a lot if you're already really tight with your budget. But I want, to, I want you to consider something because I've talked to a lot of people who say I couldn't possibly afford something like $300 a month to promote my music. And this brings me back to something that I used to do when, when I was younger and I, before I graduated from college, I was in school, I was working at Starbucks, I didn't have much money. And what I used to do is I used to get coffee every day at Dunkin' Donuts and I used to get a sandwich every day. And so I figured out I was blowing like maybe eight to $10 a day on coffee and a sandwich every morning. So let's just say it's 10. Five times a week is 50 bucks. Multiply that by the course of a month, that's $200. I was blowing between like 150 and $250 a month on like Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks. Never mind if you add Chipotle and going out to eat. Like if you make coffee at home, it's practically free. If you cook food at home, it's dramatically cheaper than going out to eat. So that's what I used to do. And a lot of people I know when they tell me they couldn't afford something like that, they have these other things in their lives they're doing that would almost completely pay for that. And at least when you're marketing your music, you're getting some of that money back. And if you're, you wanna talk about the whole profitability aspect, you can check out this video here. But some of you that might be a solution that changes your ability to be able to do paid marketing or not. So the general gist of running a Facebook or meta ad campaign is you're gonna be running ads to multiple audiences. You can see in this case, I'm running ads to alt people like alternative metal, metal core, and new metal. In this case, the alternative metal audience get the best cost per conversion. If we were to open up this alternative metal audience, you're gonna see that I tested a bunch of ads. Uh, it's particularly six different videos. Now, this could just be six different videos that you made for social media. In fact, if you're already posting your social content, you might already know which videos work best for your music. And so you can use the exact same videos, use your ads on social media and, and vice versa. So in this case, this is just a video of me lip syncing uh, one of my songs just here in my home studio. You'll notice this is literally the same room that I'm in right now. <laughs> and so that's, that's all it is. And this was a pretty high performing ad. And then what happens is people see this, I'm, I'm targeting things that I think they'll like. They click on my ad, it takes them to a landing page in which they can click and go listen to my song. And that triggers what's called a conversion event using the Facebook pixel. So if you're confused, <laughs> you're like, Andrew, you just said a lot of confusing things that I've never heard of before. Don't worry, I have maybe a hundred plus videos on this channel that you can, you can, you can watch and learn this stuff. And I will list, I'll link one right here for you, which is the most recent one I've done for how to do this entire campaign from scratch, the entire process from start to finish using uh, common tools that, that you can access. So yeah, if you're interested in doing this stuff, I highly recommend you check out that video. If that sounded like way too much and you have no interest in doing it, I also have an ad agency called Forbid Media. You can check out a link 
in the description, or if you prefer a course over, over like hiring a company to do it for you or watching a YouTube video, I also have a course in the description called Spot for Growth Machine. So you can watch the video, you can get a course, or you can hire my agency. Whatever option sounds good for you, whatever works for you, works for me. <laughs> so a lot of artists think that if they have some money, finally, that they can use to promote their music, they should immediately just start dumping it into playlist promotion. But often that's not the case. And the reason is using something like meta ads will actually get you fans that listen for a long period of time and listen to multiple songs, whereas the playlisting will not. It'll just give you a short term uh, burst of numbers that is very useful in certain situations. But it's not useful if you're a brand new artist. And this is, I now am co-owner of a playlisting company called Partner Product, which you can find the link in the description. So even I have a financial incentive to tell you to go use playlisting. I don't think you should use it from the start. And there are some very key situations when you should use it, which I'll, again, I'll link to a video here so you can go see those reasons for yourself, but they're not for new artists. So that's why I'm not telling you to do anything with playlisting in this video. If you're starting off a new year and you have this idea that you're just going to throw every song in a playlist and that's all you're going to do all year, don't do it. I'd rather you have to throw that money into ad campaigns. It's just, it's just going to give you way more bang for the buck over the long term. Even if in the short term, it feels like it's not going to do as well, over the long term, it will do way better. And everything I showed you with Ever Waking Moment, that band I'm used, kind of use as an example, we didn't do any playlist promotion. We're, in, we're a metal band. There isn't playlist promotion for the most part. We did everything with just ads and almost no social media content. All right, so now I want to give you some bonus things that not everyone will be able to do. Some of them everyone will be able to do, including this first one. And this revolves around social media, but it's not heavily reliant on posting, although you will be posting when you do this. What we're going to do is think of hashtags that relate to your niche, and you're going to go to those hashtags on Instagram or TikTok or whatever and interact with related or popular or recent content that's been created. And when I say interact, I don't just mean like click like, click like, click like, etc. I mean like... Find content that you actually enjoy in that hashtag and watch it and like it and leave a thoughtful comment on it. And if you really like the content creator, follow them. And you're going to do this for maybe 50 posts a day. <laughs> and that, that sounds like a lot. But the, but the purpose of this, if you're having meaningful interactions with a whole bunch of people in your niche, there's going to be people who reciprocate those actions. They're going to see you and they're going to go check out your profile and watch some content like a post, follow, etc. And it sounds silly, right? This sounds like it would never possibly work. But I know someone who over the past year has been able to do this and go from pretty much zero followers on Instagram to like 1,500 for free, right? Completely for free. So if you're like, I don't have any budget to market my music, but I have a ton of free time, you can go do this. And it's the important thing is to not spam people. Don't be like, go check out my music. You're just having meaningful interactions. So finding bands that are very similar to your band going on and just be like, holy crap, that drop was amazing. Or, wow, I recorded at that studio too. That's really cool. That I wonder if we were there at like the same month or something. I don't know. Whatever. I'm just making up random examples. But the point is having meaningful interactions and starting to build connections in your community of people who make similar stuff to you. It does work. It's slow. It's a ton of work, but it is worthwhile. So the next thing that many people can do, but not everyone, is touring or playing shows. So if you're able to play live, and you're, we want to play live, then I encourage you to play live. And a lot of artists will actually write off playing live as a marketing expense because playing live takes a ton of work. It's, it's a lot of work getting a live show ready, rehearsing everything, getting the sound right, making sure if you're using backing tracks, you have a, a technology to actually pull that off, et cetera. And then you actually have to find these shows and uh, get on the roster. And a lot of the shows you're going to get on at the start are not going to be paying. And if they are paying, it's going to be very bad. So you might even lose money once you factor in like the cost of driving to the venue and gear breaking and stuff like that. But the key is you're going to want to find places to play that have bands with audiences that are actually relevant to you. It makes no impact to you if you're playing with an artist who's a completely different genre. And a lot of battle of the bands type things are this exactly. It's just a way for like people to bring in their friends and have a good time and then leave. It doesn't matter Like if you're like a death metal band and you're playing between a blues band and a pop band. It doesn't really help you. <laughs> so if you're like a hardcore metal band, you probably want to find the venues that host hardcore metal bands and then know the bands that play there and then try to play there. Like you're going to have to look up venues. You're going to have to talk to the band, see how they get in, contact the venues if that's the means that people get in there. If you can't get in there directly with the venue, maybe talk to some bands who are playing there and see if you could open for them. The live world is not my forte, but from everyone I've talked to who, who it is their forte, 
that's the strategy, right? You gotta you gotta find these local places and then you gotta go play. Whether that means you're talking to bands, you're talking to venues, you gotta start somewhere. And over time, once you get bigger and bigger numbers, and you can actually draw a crowd places, that's when it actually starts to be a financial thing. Whereas at the first, it's just gonna be a complete grind fest. You're trying to play shows to one, maybe have fun, but also build up your audience. On a very similar note, doing live streams can actually be incredibly effective as well. So maybe if you're in a really bad area or just traveling is not an option for you, you can do live streams on a lot of social media apps like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. A lot of people I know do it on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitch, etc. So if you're building traction on a certain platform, doing live events as live streams, it actually is a pretty amazing growth strategy in most places. Most social media platforms will actually boost the presence of live events that happen because they're, they're live. They happen and then they go away. So they make them a little bit more visible. And it can actually be a good tactic for getting new viewers in the door. But also it's a way to get your fans really excited. If you have people that are starting to like what's happening, having a free live stream that anyone can join is a great way to pull people in. In fact, I have a free live event that any of you can go and join. It's my music marketing summit happening January 16th to January 18th. You can find the link in the description. But it's a it's a it's not quite a live event. There's some live elements happening about live stream. But every day there's music marketing content from different people that you can come and consume entirely for free. There is a VIP package if you want to upgrade. But you can consume the entire summit material for free. So as I mentioned earlier, you can check out this video to learn how you can run Facebook ads or meta ads to promote your music on streaming services like Spotify. But if you'd rather just have another company do the entire process for you from start to finish, I have my ad agency called Forbid Media, which you can check out in the link right there. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure to subscribe for more music marketing content and I'll see you in the next video.